What's up, everybody? My name's Parasite. Welcome back to the Jose Mourinho Challenge with Chelsea. Today, we take on West Ham in the Premier League and Tottenham in the FA Cup third round. Yeah, we got Tottenham in the third round. There are plenty of League 2 teams, most League 1 teams, and obviously all championship teams, and yet we got a top 7 Premier League side because, of course, we did. We always have the worst draw luck. But speaking of the Premier League, we are top. And we are cruising. We are still unbeaten. And we are top with five points over Manchester United, who are suddenly second. Liverpool have had a little fall from grace. They are now seven points behind us. They had a couple losses in December. They lost to Leeds. They lost to Man City. They drew with Aston Villa. And so that sent them down the table a little bit. But speaking of Aston Villa, they've had a much, much worse drop. They were surprisingly top of the Premier League. And now they are 11 points behind us. And we have a game in hand. It has not gone well for Aston Villa. They had a pretty good start to this season. Obviously, they were top of the league. And then December hit. And yeah, it's not been good if you're an Everton supporter. They lost against or uh, Aston Villa supporter. They lost to Everton. They drew with Man City, which is not a bad result, especially away from home. But then they lost to Leeds at home. They beat Leicester. They lost to us. They drew with Liverpool. And they lost to Bristol City. So a couple tough games in there. But still... Not promising look for Aston Villa. Obviously, we have also played through the entire month of December, and like I said, we're unbeaten. After that Liverpool match, we played Wolves, and we dominated them. 1-5-1, just a pure dominant performance. Goal scoring like crazy. And then it's a 1-0 at home against Arsenal that we didn't goal score like crazy. And it was actually really, really even. Arsenal are a decent team, but the only goal was an own goal. We just weren't very good, but we did get the win. That's what's most important. Then we played the last game of the group stage against Inter Milan. Obviously for us, that game didn't matter. And we still won it. We were at home. We completely rotated the squad, though, and we got a 2-0 win. Then Norwich. There has to be a draw in there. Away from home, we drew 0-0 with Norwich. And it was a lot like this Southampton match. We absolutely wiped the floor with them. It wasn't even close. They absolutely stole a point. Nearly 3 XG. 8 half chances. 0 goals. Love it. But we've won every game since. After that, we played Everton, and we beat them 4-1 this time in the EFL Cup quarterfinal. Then Aston Villa, like I said, we beat them 1-0 away from home. But it took a 91st-minute winner. But it was kind of like this Norwich match as well. We absolutely dominated it. Not as much as the Norwich match, but we deserved the win. We did get it, but it came very late. And then after we beat Everton 4-1, we went to their place and only beat them 1-0. And it was a penalty that got the win but we were still the much better team like Aston Villa but our goal scoring is just so random just so absolutely random apparently the last game we played was Newcastle at home we beat them 2-0 but they had a sending off for 29 minutes I feel like our opposition have had a lot of sending offs against us this year but it took us till the 67th minute to get a goal still I don't know why that's always the case we cannot take you know advantage of our superiority right after the sending off it takes another 40 minutes but we did get the goal, and then Valentin Cerezo sealed it. So now we've got a West Ham side that's at 8th in the Premier League. And then, yeah, tough draw. Tottenham in the FA Cup third round. Don't love it. But we have also had our Champions League first knockout round draw. That one was a little bit easier. But that was more because there weren't that many good teams in Pot 2 from the Champions League this year. If we look at the results from the group stage, Bayern won their group. Lille finished second. Obviously, we won our group. Inter finished second in our group, even with that loss on the final day. Rangers topped the group with Barcelona in it and Munchen Gladbach, who also got over Barcelona. So Barcelona are in the Europa League. Munchen Gladbach were a two seed. Okay. Manchester United won their group, but Sporting qualify for the next round. PSG won their group. Hertha second. Liverpool obviously won their group. Fiorentina second over the likes of Atletico Madrid, who finished bottom, by the way. They only get Europa League. Juventus won their group. Leipzig second over Sociedad. Pretty tough group right there. And Arsenal win their group over AC Milan. So the teams we could have gotten were Lille, Munchen Gladbach, Sporting, which I wanted so bad. I wanted it so, so bad. Didn't happen, though. Hertha Berlin, Fiorentina, Leipzig, and Milan. So obviously, out of those, Milan's probably the biggest, the toughest test. After that, probably Leipzig. And then it's kind of an amalgamation of who knows at this point. It's 2032. But the team that we did get was Lille. And I think that's a pretty solid draw. I think out of all the teams, they were on the weaker side. They were definitely on the weaker side. I think we could have gotten an easier draw, but I'm pretty happy with that one. Before we get into the squad for this first match against West Ham, 
we are four days into the transfer window and i'm already doing a little bit of business and we're mostly looking forward to the future we've got four young regen players that we're looking for and we got one player who's gonna be a replacement for a player that's leaving at the end of the season but of the four regions i think only two of them i'm confident i'm gonna get we don't really have anyone else trying to get them from us the other two well one of them basically everyone in europe wants them and has offered him a contract i don't know how that one's gonna go the other one Bar Bayern Munich are also in for him, so still not too sure about those. So I'll show you the two that I'm pretty confident are going to come here, and I'll show you the replacement for the player that's leaving. The first young player that looks like he's coming in is Oscar Falco. He is a Belgian goalkeeper, 19 years old, only one and a half star current ability, which for me, typically if they're like 19 and they're only one and a half stars, I completely ignore them. But goalkeeper, obviously a little bit different. They mature later. So I think it's well, it's okay to take a risk on him, especially because it's a free. He is leaving on a free to come to here, and it's wage is not much, I think 10k a week. So really, there's no reason not to at this point. The other young player we are paying for, but he is also pretty good, and he's a center back, which are very hard to find. At least ones that are good and ha don't have any massive holes in their game. So the player we're going after is Yazichi. Uh, he is a center back. He is six foot, only 10 strength, but he's only 18 years old. Two star current ability, five star potential. That's only going to get better. His technical defensive abilities are very good. Passing nine is not awful, and it should grow to around 11, 12 or so, which is perfectly fine for a non-ball playing defender. He's got really good teamwork. His vision's okay, good work rate. Anticipation, really the only mental area that I like that's kind of low, and that's probably, out of all of them, other than like bravery, that's probably the one I'd rather have a little bit lower. Concentration is very important. Decisions are very important, especially if you're playing a possession style. Obviously, composure kind of goes with that as well. I'll show you what we paid for Yuzichi here in a second. But first, I'm going to get to our final signing that we feel confident is going to come in. And that's because he's got a work permit decision. And when that happens, he's coming. And it is former Chelsea player Malang Sar. He is going to be the replacement for Gianluca Mancini. Obviously, he's leaving at the end of his contract. He's 36 years old. You know, he's still pretty good. I'm not super against it. And we're going to be bringing in Sar to be his replacement. I wanted somebody better. And there were some players that were very, very good whose contracts were expiring that I wanted to go after, but they signed new contracts literally like the day before the transfer window opened. So I couldn't negotiate with him. And so I've had to settle on Malang Sar, but I still think he's pretty dang good. He is a little short at only six foot, but he's got 13 jumping reach, 13 heading. Passing is very good. Defensively, he is fine. Mentally, very solid. Physically, pretty dang good with that 15 pace, 15 acceleration. Really good agility and balance. I think he's going to be a good player for us, even if he's not quite the quality I'd like for my third center back. So now when you look at the fees, obviously Oscar Falco is coming in on a free. Maling Sar is also coming in on a free, and his contract is only 46k a week. Obviously, he's not quite as talented as Gianluca Mancini, but we're also not paying him nearly as much. Almost half of what Mancini is making this year. And then Zichi, we are paying 13 million up front, 28 in add-ons, only 38.5k a week wages. I'm pretty happy with all those. And obviously the two other players are going for you see here. Look, Lanearts is the one that every team in Europe's going after. He's a 20 year old midfielder that is very solid. 33K a week, very affordable wages. And then the other one, the one Bar or Bayern Munich are going after is an 18 year old Fatih Kaya. He is a winger, also very good. His does have a transfer fee. Lanearts is a free 12 and a half million. The wages are very, very cheap as well. And I don't expect anyone from our first team to leave in this transfer window. So unless something changes, that might be the end of our dealings for this transfer window. So now let's get to the squad for this match against West Ham. You're doing a little bit of rotation, which apparently in FM22 is sacrilegious. I'm having some issues, mostly with players playing time promises, all the P's. It's extremely difficult in this game, I feel like. I feel like in FM22, more than any other FM, Fatigue plays a massive part, both on the field and off the field in terms of like injury susceptibility and like I said, on field performance. And yet they've also made rotation basically impossible because you just guarantee that someone's going to be unhappy. Three different players have come to me about their playing time, all being unhappy. And there are three of them, probably my best players who have played probably in top five of the most appearances in the team. But apparently that's not enough. The first one that came to you is Elias Mariba. He wasn't happy with his playing time. Okay, I played him in every game since. I cannot have him getting unhappy. He's still got another couple year on, years on his deal, but I'm trying to give him a new one as well. So I want to be able to keep him happy and tie him down. But it's just so stupid. He has played 20, he's made 20 starts. 
Yet the game thinks he's only a regular starter when he's supposed to be an important player. He's made 20 starts, three sub appearances. That is outside of Giovanni Hrazo. That is the most starts of any player in my team. And yet he's only a regular starter to start the majority of matches. <laughs> what else? Like rotation is impossible. You are penalized for being in more competitions because the players expect to play in all of those competitions, but you can't because there's a game every three days. But if you don't, they're going to be unhappy. It is a lose-lose scenario. Now, remember we just saw that LIX Mariba had played, made 20 starts and three sub-appearances, and it said he was a regular starter. Well, Bruno Thiago has made 20 starts and two sub-appearances, yet he's an important player. I don't understand that one. And Bruno Thiago hasn't missed any serious time either. He's only had one time he's been out this year, a virus that kept him out for nine days. I don't think that should be enough to change your playing time from important player to regular starter. I feel like the playing time thing in this game is broken. The second player that came to me was Eduardo Camavinga, who's not going to be available for this one because he's not fit. Hopefully you won't cry about it. Like, what do you expect me to do? But he came saying he's unhappy with his play time, even though he's played the most games of any defensive midfielder in my team. Okay, I'll play you in every single match then that you are actually capable of playing in. The third one is just the worst though. Jeremy Pino, on literally the same day Camavinga came to me, like an hour later, he comes to me. I'm not getting enough play time. I, I really want to curse here, but you are. You are. You definitely are. You've played more games than any winger in my team. And like the others where I could promise them, okay, I'll play you in basically every match. That's not enough for Jeremy Pino. I said that to him, okay, I'll promise to play you in enough matches so you're happy. And he's like, no. Enough players have already come to me complaining about the same thing, and you haven't satisfied them. I'm in the process of making Yellow Likes Mariba happy. I've played him in literally, literally every single game since he did that. And yet, Jeremy Pino thinks, yeah, I've broken too many promises, or I don't know. I don't understand it. So he is just straight up unhappy, and there's no way to make him happy. I guess being unbeaten and starting the vast, vast majority of the matches isn't enough. FM22 is very hard. But the squad I got for this one, hopefully we can figure something out. But squad are going with Thiago up top, Pino on the left wing, Zvonak on the right wing, Mariba and Mount. BD's going to start at defensive midfielder. Like I said, Camavinga is not fit. And I want to give BD some game time. He's fit. He plays for the B team quite a bit or the second team, the under 23s. So he's not always fit for first team matches. He is today. So I'm going to throw him out there. Backline of Rugeri, Badish LA, Mancini, Reese James, and Harazzo. Speaking of Giovanni Harazzo, January 1st also came with the awards, and he won a couple of them. He won the World Golden Glove and the World Goalkeeper of the Year. So Giovanni Harazzo is the best goalkeeper in the world. He is also in the World Eleven, as is Jeremy Pino and Mason Mount, and this one I didn't expect, Mark Rudin. And he's not a sub, he's, he's their starting left back in the World Eleven. Mark Rudin. Did not expect that. I guess it's mostly for what he did with Dortmund. I just looked at how long I've been recording and this might be a little bit longer one. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into this match against West Ham. First time of the match is five minutes in. West Ham are a good team. They're eighth in the table, but I'm still going to start this match trying to play our more possession style. I might have to change it. We'll just have to see. But it's what, how I want to play going forward in these home matches against teams that I think we are and should be better than. West Ham are going to think they're going to have the first highlight until an awful giveaway. BD finds Thiago, and we might have a goal early on, but no, it is right down the throat of Kelleher. Are they going to continue this highlight, though? It's going to be a goal kick. Are we going to win this? We do, but it falls to their right back. Pimbele is going to play through Jared Bowen, who is still at West Ham in 2032. We do win it back, though. Are we going to go on another attack here? We already had one shot that wasn't good enough. Bruno Thiago might have a second chance. Can he do better? I think that qualifies. He made up for hitting it right at the goalkeeper, and he banged this one with all the power in the world right in that top right corner. I'll take it. We take a lead. I definitely thought that highlight was over after Kelleher claimed that first shot. I'm glad it wasn't. Now we're going to have a second highlight about 11 minutes in. They're going to give it right back to us. Mancini, we've done pretty well against teams that look to just kick it long and hope. We've, only, we've made a couple mistakes. Beat up Batty Shelley's made one. I think uh, Mancini's made one. But for the most part, it usually works in our favor. And that looks like what's what man, uh, West Ham are going to do doing today. And once again, they do win the header down, but they lose it after that. Bruno Thiago for a second? Okay. Okay, Bruno. He heard the criticism. He hit it right down his throat. And then next two shots go in the back of the net. Good start. But we've had good starts before that haven't gone as we'd hoped. So it looks like it's going to be the good goal-scoring Chelsea today. 
glad to see it. We've got another highlight here, 31 minutes in. We're starting with the ball this time. Last couple of highlights have been West Ham giving the ball away, us going on a quick counter and getting the goal, which is more like how we play our higher tempo style, not this possession style, but hey, it worked. Now we're going to look to play the possession style, building out from the back. Jeremy Pino on this left-hand side. He's got to play, obviously, because if he doesn't, he's going to cry about it. Down this left wing. Back to Mariba. Also going to cry about it. Inside. He's going to look for a long shot. No, he's going to find Jeremy Pino for the third. And it is, I mean, you did not have to hit it that hard. You were like five yards away from the goal. You could have just curled it in the top corner. But he hated that ball, apparently. He smashed that in the top corner. 30 minutes in, it's already 3-0. We've seen a few one-sided score lines so far on camera in these, this season. And we might be headed for another. Because it's 3-0. And Bruno Thiago has a chance here again. He's got two goals. Cannot get the third as he puts this one just wide of the target. But we're going to see the resulting goal kick. Kelleher is going to go long, though. That usually doesn't work out well for the opposition, and it doesn't this time either. Gary br brings it down. We're going to eventually get up to Thiago. Looking for Mason Mount. Looking for the underlap. Finds Yer What a ball that is to Jeremy Pino. You should have done better there. Reward Mason Mount. I did not see that pass coming on. 37 minutes. West Ham have a corner. Batty Achille. Very good aerially. He heads this one away. He started the season pretty slow in terms of goal scoring from our corners, but he's really ramped it up recently. Ricky Puig is going to go all the way back to their goalkeeper. That's Kelleher. Is he going to go long? No, he's going to go short to Dorrington. Okay, this might be a West Ham highlight. Moffey on the ball. Look at this left-hand side. He finds, I'm assuming that's James Justin. He's going to cut inside and look for Suarez. Don't know which Suarez it is. Might be a region. Who knows? Ricky Puig. Kent. Back post. Jared Bowen and the West Ham legend. He's got to be a West Ham legend at this point, right? We're in 2032. He's just scored there first. Nice left footed curler into the top corner as well. Hurts to concede there at the end, especially because it was their only shot on target of the half. Of course it is. We don't, it's not like we have the best goalkeeper in the world in net or anything. But we've been the much better team, so I'm still pretty confident. We've been better in terms of possession. We have dominated possession. We've created more chances. We've created better chances. We've put them away. I'm still pretty confident we're going to win this match, but we need to stay locked on. Pretty slow start to this half as we're 63 minutes in. We've got our first highlight of the half. It's going to start with West Ham, but these typically don't go well for them. Is this one going to be different? They have a chance to make this a game. If they get a goal here, it is going to be nervy for the next 35, 40 minutes. And they're going to look to build off from the back. Maybe they've learned their lesson that going long doesn't seem to work for them. Strain Larson on this right-hand side. Going to cut inside and find Jared Bowen, the goal scorer. He's going to go back to Elliott. Into Suarez. He's going to hold on to it and get it to Ricky Puig. He's going to find a through ball to Kent, who is in a very good position. He's got the assist, and now he's got a goal. And yeah, it's getting nervy. Is that their second shot on target? I might cry. Two minutes left. It looks like we might escape with the win. But Kelleher, the backup Liverpool goalkeeper, has made eight saves. World goalkeeper of the year? Zero. Love, love, love this game. They ended with two shots on target and two goals. But we do get away with the win. Why does it keep happening? Bruno Thiago gets man of the match for his brace. I wish he could have got his hat trick. But I also wish the world goalkeeper of the year could have made a save. Like, just one. Is that too much to ask? Apparently. Up next, we are going to play Tottenham. But before that, we've got a Liverpool match. I thought about coming back for this one instead of the West Ham match. But we have played Liverpool a lot in this series. A lot more than I've liked. So, I'm not going to show that one. Also, I don't really care about the AFL Cup. So I'll see you for the Tottenham match in the FA Cup third round. Quick update. I'm nearing the end of this Liverpool game. We're in about the 75th minute and we're losing 3-0. But we have out XG'd them. They have 0.63 XG and three goals. We have 1.18 XG and zero goals. But, but we don't have the world goalkeeper of the year in net. We have Gavin Bazunu. So obviously if we did, they would have scored like what? Six goals, right? They have six shots on target. I think the math adds up. This message is from Miles Jacobson. If I did something in a past life or this one to harm you, I am sincerely sorry, but I have suffered enough. Make it stop. So just like that, we are no longer unbeaten. Our 50 game stretch is over. Fortunately, the game didn't end 3-0, but unfortunately it did end 4-0. Liverpool got another goal. Now, did they end up out exchanging us? Of course they didn't. They didn't. Did they get one XG? I mean, they got four goals. Surely they had enough chances to get one XG. No. No, they didn't. They didn't have one XG. They couldn't even make it to one XG. And yet they got four goals. 
So in back-to-back -back matches, a team has scored every single shot on target, and then a team scored four goals from under 1xG. For being unbeaten, like for over half the season until that last match, I feel like everything couldn't have been going worse. Three of our most important players are all unhappy. We've been FM'd basically every single week, and it seems to only be getting worse. This has been a weird, weird season. But all I can do is just act like it didn't happen and move on. Obviously, I don't care about the EFL Cup, and it was Liverpool. We do still have a second leg to overturn it. I mean, I actually wouldn't be surprised if we do. Like, this team is just one end of the spectrum or another. So we're either going to get absolutely smashed and lose 10-0 on aggregate, or we're going to end up winning. I think those are the only two outcomes. But this is a match I care a lot, a lot more about. It is the FA Cup. We need to win this. We got a very, very tough first draw. One of the toughest we could have gotten. Hopefully, we can still get past it. At least we are at home, so we should have that advantage. We're going to start playing our possession style. And the vast majority of the team is fit and available. Thiago top with Pino and, and Zvonarek who comes in. Because Kai Havertz still, I don't know if he's played a single good game. Like he, He's just been pretty dreadful all season long. Like He's never awful, but he's never good. I think he has the worst rating outside of Mason Mount, who also was really good last season and has done nothing this year. I don't understand. We're on such an unbe unbeaten streak, and yet... It's just, just, I don't, I don't know. Uh, Mount is going to start, though, in midfield. We've, obviously, we've played a lot of games recently, like three games in five days. So, I do quite a bit of rotation. Mariba comes in and starts, as does Camavinga. Backline of Rugeri, Badish, Yele, Cerezo, and Reese James. And then Harazo and Net, the world goalkeeper of the year, who, if he makes a single save, that's going to be progress. Well, this has been a pretty awful first half. It took 17 minutes for a team to have a shot. That was us. We have the only shot so far today. Four shots, two on target. Tottenham have a nice shot, which means they're going to shoot here and score. Giovanni Hirazo's made a save. You all saw it, right? I'm not hallucinating. He made a save. They had a shot, and it was saved. It didn't go in. This is, this is new territory. But the highlight's going to continue. They can still score. And if that would have went in, I would have just uh, all that forward. And that ends in absolutely dreadful half of football with only one highlight. 10 minutes into the second half, we have a highlight. Second highlight of the match. And again, it's Chelsea or Liverpool. Whatever team we're playing, Tottenham. Good Lord, how did that not go in? Almost 70 minutes in, we've got a highlight here. And it's going to start with Tottenham. Has had every single highlight so far. They're going to go back to their goalkeeper, who's going to head it on. Interesting. Demerol on the ball. It's going to go back to their goalkeeper. He can't really head it this time. It'd be impressive if he tried. They're going to look for a ball over the top, and they're going to bring it down. Vlahovic and the sending off. Um, literally, what did I do, Miles? Literally, please tell me. I need to know. What did I do? So in the last three matches, we've had a team score every single shot on target. We've had a team score four goals from less than one XG. And now, 70 minutes in, we haven't seen our team shoot the ball yet. And we have a sending off. I really can't wait for these next 20 minutes. This is going to be the resulting free kick, and it's probably going to go in. Very nearly. And it's almost oh, an own goal. That would have been that would have been the icing on the cake. That really should have been an own goal. <sighs> well, they have the ball back. We're obviously we're playing a three at the back because why not at this point? Utara threw on goal and he puts it wide. He should have put that on target. If he did, it's probably going to the back of the net. 79th minute, they've got another free kick. Dimmerall the near post. And good lord, what is happening? 82 minutes in, we've got a goal kick, and we're gonna go out to Cerezo. We're still gonna try to play out the back, even though we're down a man, which might not be a good idea, especially if Ruggieri's going to do something stupid, which he doesn't. But Harazo goes long, and we don't win these. Yeah, we don't. So it's going to be another Tottenham attack. We still have not seen a shoot, even though we've had more shots than Tottenham. Okay, now they've had more because they've had an extra man for almost 20 minutes. We've won it back, though. And are we going to create something here? No, 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 we're not. Uh, okay, we're going to win the ball. I am... Cerezo, ball over top, Tiago. Brings it down. Is he going to have runners? He's eventually. Jeremy Pino. From. Come on, Mike. <sighs> FM. I do not understand you. I just don't. I do not understand this game. It's like it just sticks the knife in deeper and deeper and deeper. And then. But don't worry. They're, then they pull it out like. Ah, see, here you go. Yeah. And then they stab you some more. I'm expecting a couple Tottenham goals here to end this match. All right, 87th minute. We've got a highlight. I think this is the bit where they start stabbing me again. Romero on the ball. I have made a few changes after that goal. 
I've gone to wingbacks. Yemi Pino's going to be a wingback. Have fun. Uh, Rudin's come in to be an actual wingback. Ruggeri saying that's in a back roll. Change rolls a little bit. Kamavinga, sweeper keeper to defend. Havertz has gone up top. Obviously went cautious. Time wasting. Lower the tempo a little bit, but I still want to kind of hit him on the counter. You know, if we score another goal, that's also game over. So I still want to try to do that. But I am slowing the pace down, regrouping. Uh, but I think everything here is the same. I haven't really changed anything. So I still want to kind of play my way. I still would like to get another goal, even though we are down a man. But I feel like just going ultra, ultra defensive and throwing everybody back, you're going to concede more often than not, it feels like, at this game. Especially us. How do I get out of this screen? Cancel, I guess. I didn't make any changes. All right, what's happening here? Fatty Shelly's going to clear it long. It's going to fall to Oliver Skip, I'm assuming. He's going to find Marcus Alonso. Right-hand side, Mary Demerol in a lot of space. He's going to put a ball in. And the stabbing. Yeah, th that stabbing I was talking about, there it is. I knew it was coming. It's a goal. 88th minute, a couple minutes after we scored, they score a goal. And now I'm just going to go undo all those changes. Two minutes of added time left, and it looks like we might be ending this 1-1. One -one. Is it? Is it? Is it game over? Extra time? Replay? I think it's a replay. At Tottenham's ground. Okay. They out XG'd us. Still want to cry. I think we need a philosopher or something to watch this season. There has to be something philosophically that we can actually learn from what has gone on. Because we've had a really good season in terms of results. We're unbeaten until that unfortunate loss against Liverpool. But outside of the actual score lines, it's been as bad as physically possible. Well, I did not enjoy that. Not even slightly. We've had periods in sporting where things just couldn't go right. We had, you know, some rough stretches, but those were always just us, you know, not quite scoring as many goals as we should. This is a new one. Basically, every FMing possible has happened to us in this last three matches. Right now, I don't think I ever want to play this game again. But I am going to be back pretty soon. If, I guess for this Tottenham match. I mean, right now, it feels like we're finding every way possible to drop points. I'm really curious what this game has left. So I guess I'll see you next episode where we'll find two hilarious new ways to drop points. Especially because we're taking on Tottenham again, away from home this time, and then Man City away from home. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be having fun next episode either. If you made it this far, and also think Miles Jacobson has a personal vendetta against you, why don't you like the video, subscribe, and click the bell. The links to all my socials and my Twitch are in the description. I really appreciate all your support. Thank you all for joining me, and I'll see you next time.